and welcome back now I've made some progress with the project that I spoke to you about a couple of videos ago about monitoring those green bin lids out the back but I think we can make this a little bit more generic don't you think for example what is it exactly that I'm trying to do well I'm monitoring the state of a tilt switch in my case so I can detect when the bins you know are upright like that or perhaps leaning back a bit and when they're closed leaning forward but it's just a a digital pin at the end of the day isn't it it's a switch that gets well in this case turned on by the a rolling ball or a bit of mercury inside a glass bulb but it could be a, a push button it could be even a, a PIR detector that brings a signal low when it detects movement it could be a model railway setup where if a, if a beam an infrared beam is broken it brings a signal low and things happen now, a quick shout out to my sponsor, JLC PCB. They're doing a collaboration with Easy EDA. As you know, it's my preferred PCB CAD program. It's simple but powerful. It's intuitive to use. Let's just have a quick look at a design I made recently. So here's a fairly recent design of mine, my ESP32 web radio. Designed it in Easy EDA because it had all the features that I needed. And uh, don't forget the teardrop feature that allows the tracks to be slightly bigger at the ends where they join pins and things to give them a bit more stability. And then you just click the Gerber button at the top here. So that one there. And it says, great, you can either generate your Gerber files directly or order them at JLC PCB. And if you click that, it will go straight to the JLC PCB site, upload the Gerber files as it's generating them in the background automatically and uh, show you what you can do there. And let's not forget they got a Facebook group here it is and as you can see they're joining forces here a bit more transparently so we understand that the two are connected easy EDA to design your PCB and JLC PCB to actually manufacture it sounds good to me and if you join the group there's all sorts of good things on the way so have a look at that as well JLC PCB go and have a look now in my case I need to know when those lids are up and have been left up and when they're shut again because I don't want my green bin filling up with water again. Even yesterday, I found one of the crates I hadn't dried out completely, and there's still water inside. So it's 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 a big issue, all right? No, not 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 the magazine. It's a big problem for me. So we can think of it in general terms or generic terms about something happens. You know, a, a signal is generated, but the fact you've pressed a button or trod on a burglar alarm mat or something brought the level low, and something's going to happen. So let's have a first think about what it is I'm trying to achieve. Well, one, I want it battery powered, right? And um, yeah, we'll talk about solar and all that sometime in the future, but I want it battery powered. I want it to send out a wireless signal to me here in the in the workshop. Now, luckily, I'm only, you know, well, six foot away, maybe a couple of meters, not far. So it hasn't got far to go. Um, I want it to be absolutely reliable. It's no good it not telling me I've left a, a bin lid open. So I don't know that it's open and therefore it starts raining and gets filled up. And uh, because it's battery powered, of course, I don't want the battery going flat without telling me either. So there's lots of little little bits of this project and beginners might find this project a nice little simple thing to do because there's various elements of it. And you'll see how my thought process starts with this sort of thing. You know, I could do this, I could do that and break it down into manageable chunks. As they say, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? You don't do the whole thing in one go. And I'm just looking at various bits of it and I haven't finished it yet by any means, but I most certainly have got um, well a good start now on the way I expect to go forward. So let's um, let's go to the whiteboard that I was when I was toying around with some ideas earlier this week and just see what I've come up with. So let's think about the very simplest circuit we could have if we have a battery or other power source um, with a tilt switch like that. That could power you know the the Arduino or Nano whatever it is I'm going to use, and it could also power the NRF, couldn't it as well, right? So they could all be powered via a simple tilt switch. And, you know, that would sort of work in a way if, assuming the tilt switch could handle the current uh, that these two required, you lift the bin lid up, the switch goes down, powers these up, they do the business, you know, sending out radio frequency, whatever. And, um, yeah, sort of works. There's a few flaws in it, though. One is that the battery here 
is powering both this and this, and this can only take 3.3 .3 volts. All right, so we have to be mindful of that. What are we going to use here? And um, when the lid is then put back down again, so this goes up and breaks the circuit, these just die instantly. There's, there's no time for it to send out any other kind of message to say the lid's gone down. So, OK, what else can we do then? Well, if we have still the same battery source, and we then have the auto on off system that uh, I designed a while back now, and that was, I think, with an AT Tiny 85, but it doesn't matter, any microcontroller would be able to do that. So that is now powering the rest of the system. So that way goes the Nano and anything else, right? So whatever, whatever is here, this is being powered by the tilt switch. Now that's better um, because this auto on off goes on when you put the this thing down, but it doesn't go off again until the microcontroller has sent back a, a sort of kill command. Right, so this latches on via this and then will not switch off again until this is said, I've done everything I need to do, now turn off. And by I've done everything I need to do, I mean letting the NRF24 send out a lid has closed message. All right. Okay, so that's, that's better, isn't it, I think? Now, the problem with this still, though, is that uh, this power supply could be anything from uh, a single AA battery or two, perhaps, to make it three volts. Um, it could be um, an 18650, yeah, which is, well, it can go down to three volts. It's probably dead by that time. You've probably killed it permanently. But uh, we'll go up to 4.2 volts, fully charged. The average voltage on an 18650, they say, is about 3.4 to 3.6. Right? So if you're monitoring this, which I'm seriously considering doing, once it gets down to 3.3, .3, I'm going to say that's it. It's a dead battery. Do something. Send something out here to alert me that, yeah, that battery does need changing. However, if it's fully charged and it's 4.2 volts, this device here, the uh, this one here rather, NRF24L01+, plus, that can only take 3 volts 3. Right, that's all it can take. Well, all right, if you push it, I think it can go up to 3.6. Yeah, but it can't take 4.2, so we'd immediately kill it unless we, we did something with the voltage at this point. But I was hoping really to turn this on via the Arduino, or, or in this case, a Nano. Hmm, we need to think about that a little bit more then, don't we? OK, so we've got a germ of an idea here. Um, so let's see what I can do with that auto on off bit then. Now we are going to be using, I suspect, an NRF24 to do the uh, transmission, but we'll just put that to aside for a moment. We're not, not ready for that yet, right? It's another part of the project. So we'll put that one aside. Uh, we're also going to be using an Arduino of some kind. Well, it doesn't have to be an Arduino. It could be a Nano. It could be an STM32. In fact, any microcontroller it could even be an AT Tiny 85 for the simplicity uh, for this project. But let's assume that it's of the Arduino family. Yes, yes, it could be a Raspberry Pi Pico as well, but it's not going to be all right. So let's put that to one side. We're not ready for that yet either. But what we are after is, in fact, just that dual MOSFET. Now, if you recall back in that video, there, that one up there, when I talked about auto on off kill that was um, quite a quite a well I'd say quite a good idea that I had there because I'm using that now and the beauty of it is that when you're running on battery you really don't want anything powered until the time is right the situation demands that something is powered up does that mean then that if I'm using a dual MOSFET like this I don't need to put the Arduino to sleep no it doesn't of course it doesn't if I lift the lid of my bin up, right, and it stays up for four hours, say, which it could easily do in the summer while I'm doing stuff and getting components out, do you think I really want the Arduino to run all that time? Of course not. It's got to go to sleep and save power. Otherwise, even if I use a big battery like an 18650, it will soon run out of a few days. So there's there's all these deep sleep things, power and all that, but that's that's we'll push those to one side oh, and the camera look, 
uh, and think about this first all right so let's uh, have a look at what i did earlier right here's my very first prototype no arduino involved at this stage this is just getting the electronics right okay with that dual mosfet n channel p channel uh, a little tilt switch over here that will be attached in some way to my lid of, the, of those green bins uh, just a couple of uh, resistors on there and an led which shows when the power is on and when it's off the power on being when the arduino and nfr nrf 24 l01 can be powered up so if i if i lift this up emulating the lid going up there we are power on oh i think the thing's fallen out hang on right there we are so the lid's gone up the power's on the lid goes down it goes off did you see that flicker there that's yeah you see that see how sensitive that is i'm a little bit worried about um, switch bounce because obviously if inside here there's a steel ball connecting the two wires going in so if that if that ball goes down it literally will bounce and therefore we'll get switch bounce which means the arduino is going to let you see switch on more than once and off again which is not not ideal in fact when you consider what's actually going to happen in real life i'm going to whack that lid up and click in the old legs if i have to one of them's got the legs the one that let all the water in you know and it's going to shake that lid around so if this thing is attached to the lid then that's going to be shaking around as well and you can see the led flickering there so if that gets bashed it's going to do well things to the electronics that we don't really want to happen um i guess we could put a, a small capacitor across the switch just to give us a little bit of um leeway you know a second or so of charge let's put that on next right so i've just added this little uh, capacitor in there right, it's a 10 micro that's across basically across the contacts of this tilt switch so that when the tilt switch breaks the connection there's still going to be about a second's worth of charge on that capacitor to give us time time that if there is just a bit of bounce on that switch um the power will not go off instantly right so let's let's just try that out right on ah now did you see that if you were watching carefully on that led it sort of faded out a bit because obviously the voltage now on the gate to that mosfet doesn't disappear instantly it slowly goes down doesn't it as the capacitor discharges so therefore the power being allowed through the mosfet drops as well in a sort of non-linear way however that's that's okay you know what happens if we shake it now i don't know if the microphone's picking up the rattling of that ball but that would be some pretty severe banging on the lids and as you can see the led did not blink uh, in fact i should be able to flip it down and up again in about half a second and it shouldn't do anything down up oh it, yes i think it did actually oh it's fallen out oh chaos but you got the point yeah that capacitor just kept the charge high enough for that small window so that while i'm putting the lid up and banging around with stuff it's not going to make the the eventual arduino and nrf24 switch on and off on and off on and on on off uh, it's just it's chaos right we don't want that we want stability so i think that's good as a proof of concept i think i think we're there with this yeah now we've just got to connect up the actual arduino to this as the next step and see how we're gonna work all that out right here's the sort of practical demonstration of the prototype now so what i've got it connected up to is an arduino at the back and we'll go through that um the same sort of circuit here a couple of tiny amendments that's because we've got to consider the way the current flows through the arduino and potentially could either power up bits of the circuit we don't want it to power up or vice versa uh, a bit of another circuit could power up the arduino by virtue of the fact it goes back through the gpio pin so you have to be very careful on that but i'll talk about that in the circuit diagram so what i've got here is this um, coaster taped to my my uh, mat and um, the tilt switch is on there so this emulates the bin the reason i got um a biro underneath there is because the bin does actually slant down a bit like that doesn't it okay so not much it's, it's probably about 15 degrees so that's what that emulates um right yeah let's just let's just demo it i've, I've left the light on here the downside to doing it with the full-size arduino like this of course if you've got the bootloader loaded 
Now, you know from previous videos, I presume, that you might have watched of mine, is that um, I tend to finalise my project without the bootloader. Uh, in other words, no bootloader present. Once you've you know, done all the code to a certain extent, so you're not uploading every two seconds, the bootloader basically gets in the way, and it most certainly does get in the way of this, because of the delay. Okay, When this circuit powers up, and therefore powers up the Arduino, you're waiting for, I don't know, possibly five seconds before the PC here acknowledges the fact, oh, something's attached to the USB, and the serial monitor on the Arduino IDE suddenly goes, oh, that suddenly appeared from nowhere. Um, the bootloader itself probably doesn't take more than about two seconds to actually run before it says, oh, nobody's trying to upload code, so therefore I'll just run the sketch. But it does take some time, and you'll see the delay in the output window when we get to that on the code. And I've got the power supply connected up on here to my power supply on the bench. I've got three volts, which is the absolute lowest I expect to go to if I'm going to run it from an 18650. Right, remember, 4.2 to three volts, absolutely dead. All right, perhaps it might even be higher. Anyway, three volts is good to test with. We can always test with higher. So this is the green bin. So if I lift the green bin now, we should say this, this light here, come on, as it did before, to say, yes, I'm running. But that the power that goes to this LED now also goes to the Arduino. So let's lift that up. Now you might have heard Windows saying, oh, something's appeared from nowhere. So the light's on down, down here. Um, and we'll just give it a few seconds. Right, okay, it's on now. And if I shut it, after a second, it all goes dead. Right, let's just have a look at the IDE. Now I am using the Arduino IDE 2.0 for this. So we'll nip over to the, um, the code window. Here we are. And in fact, I'll bring in the desktop in a little corner uh, just so that we can see it. So this is this is the code then. All right. And uh, we'll go through the code, but let's look at the debugging monitor, which I've moved over here. This debugging monitor, though, you can see that tab. You can move that tab down the bottom where it normally is or up on the side if you want to monitor something, which is quite a useful thing to do, isn't it? Standard Eclipse stuff, really. Right, now watch what happens when I... I'm going to lift the lid, so watch the lower left-hand corner, you'll see what I'm doing on the desk, and the right top corner, you'll see the actual code output. So I've opened my lid, and eventually this will say, oh, something's appeared on the USB, and the code will start running. There it goes. So it goes, the lid's open, right? Now what I can do during this time, every time it says lid open, is to actually send out a little, you know, a few bytes of data with an NRF24, just to make sure that we know it's open. And then I shut it, lid closed, and it's gone. Now I don't like this. I don't like the fact in this new IDE, just because the Arduino has dropped off the end of the USB cable, it clears the output um, window there, the serial monitor window. All my data's gone. Hmm. Don't like that. I hope they're going to change that in the future, or at least give us an option to say don't auto clear serial monitor when Arduino drops off the end. Anyway, you saw what happened there, right? So as it woke up, the code started running and said, right, the lid's open now, and I'm waiting for it to close. And when I shut it, it says, right, the lid's closed and powers off. And of course, what happens is, when we detect that the lid has closed, we first send out the transmission to say the lid has been closed, right? We can't just die. Otherwise, the light inside my workshop or whatever it is I'm gonna have in here it's going to say, the bin's still open, is it? Nobody's told me it's shut yet. So that's what the process is going to be. Let's have a look at the code. Let's take off my desktop first. Right. <clears throat> if I just drag this down a bit. Oh, yes, you see all these um, messages down the bottom here now. That's because the USB cable has now been disconnected effectively from the Arduino by virtue of the fact of powered down. Um, it's trying to reconnect every few, few seconds. Eventually it gives up, but in the meantime it's saying, well there's an error, that red one, and then another one saying I'm going to reconnect in a little while. Yeah, yeah, I'm hoping there's something they're going to do to say stop this. Because I, although I can kill the actual message, if I'm quick, I can't actually say stop doing it. 
I don't know. Remember, this is beta software, right? They're bound to sort of refine this. Right. Um, oh, one thing before we move on, let's go back to the main. So it's off now, right? The Arduino is off by the fact that the SI4599 has switched off. But how much current are we still drawing from that battery? Right, let me bring over my multimeter and we'll have a look. I'm so glad that somebody invented blue tack. I'll tell you, I can wedge it under things so that you can see things properly here. Okay, so here's the multimeter with the current flowing through it. Now it says naught milliamps. Let's just make sure that this is working and, and raise the lid. Right, up it goes. Uh, the Arduino powers up. Okay, so 20 milliamps when that's running. A lot of it, of course, is the LED down there, and a lot of it is the um, LEDs on the actual Arduino. So when we shut, lid closed, power off, zero milliamps, it reckons. Hmm. Okay, let's switch it to microamps and see how many. Microamps, 0 0.1 microamp, or zero, depending on what you believe. On here is zero microamps, or 0 0.1 microamp occasionally. And I believe that, because after all, that dual MOSFET that you see on the breadboard there, SI4599, when it's switched off, it, it really is switched off. It's only the, I guess, nanoamp leakage through the uh, drain source um, that could possibly be flowing into anything and that's so low it, it can't register. And if I'm using 18650, I reckon that will last forever in this state, yeah? The self-discharge rate of that 18650 is gonna be higher, I suspect, I fully expect, than whatever Pico amps are coming through here at the minute. Cool, so that's, that's good, isn't it? Yeah, okay, let's carry on. Okay, I think we've got to the point of the project now where we know that it's going to work is no too strong a word well we're, we're confident it's going to work okay we have we have the tilt switch bit working turning the power on and off especially with that little capacitor in it um, we've proven that the um, low dropout regulator will regulate the current uh, the voltage to 3.3 volts for the nrf 24 okay so that's okay we know that whatever we finally end up on here it will probably be a bare naked AT328P. All right, that'll solder onto a PCB, probably. Um, we know that that can control this and tell it to switch off once it's told the NRF to transmit that final burst. Um, I think we're, we're probably good to go. Oh, hang on a minute. What have we forgotten? Yes, we said we were going to monitor the battery voltage, didn't we? Now that's going to be quite complex, isn't it? To monitor the, the voltage on a... No, it's not. No. If you refer back to video 160, that one there, that's where I show how you can, you can monitor the VCC without any external components whatsoever. And it's specifically designed to monitor things like battery power. But more of that in a future week. Okay, what I'm doing now is drawing up a schematic of the whole thing because obviously I'm going to need a PCB, aren't I? Okay, I think that's that's all of this now. I think we're we're getting to the point where I think you can all see, yeah, that's going to work. What else can I use that for? Great. I think next week we might be having a look at uh, this little product. So having asked you guys, you know, are you interested in looking at the 2040 Pico from Raspberry Pi? Um, a lot of you said yes, that would be useful to do because... This sort of treads on the toes, does it not, of things like the Nano and the STM32 Blue Pill and um, a couple of the other smaller embedded products out there. So is this any good? And while we're at it, can we actually use um, Python on this rather than C, C++? There's no compiling involved. You just write your code, upload it to here, and it, it just runs. Yeah. What, what does this do so far, you say? Well, nothing at the moment. If I plug in a power supply into the, the socket here, what would you expect to see happen? Oh, look, it's flashing an LED. Gosh, how did that happen? That's amazing. Yeah, I know, it's the ubiquitous blink sketch written in MicroPython, uploaded on here. We'll have a look at that next week. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Comments down below, please. Thumbs up if you liked it. See you next week. 
I hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting. There are plenty more videos to choose and a couple are shown below. And if you'd like to subscribe to this channel, just click on my picture below and enjoy the rest of the videos. Thanks for watching.